So, okay. Ready to go? All Let's, right. Yeah. Just one second. Sure. So, our next speaker is Lee Guo from Rutgers Miller, who talks about quasi symmetric functions. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mayor, for organizing the next conference and uh, give me the opportunity to speak here. And uh, I thank the audience for, for your time in advance. Um, so I will talk about the quasi-symmetric functions. More precisely, I'll be the generalization of that, uh, which requires some kind of a renormalization technique to uh, make sense of that. Um, so this is John work with uh, uh, Rang Lui, uh, Rang Yuwei, uh, Tibong, Hou Yi Yu, and Bing Zhang. Okay, so um, so here is a more or less uh, abstract. So um, the uh, um, the uh, algebra or in a fancy language half algebra of symmetric functions and the quasi symmetric functions they are all quite well known, right? So they have plain important rules in commentorics, number theory, and so on. Um, so what took us to this place is a question that was posed by Rota, um, a well-known commentarist, as we know, um, in the middle of 1990s. Um, he proposed that uh, there should be a um, approach by to, to, uh, to generalization of quasi symmetric fun of, of symmetric functions using rota based uh, algebras. Okay, so that's what it does here. Um, but I won't talk much of rota based algebra because it's kind of abstract and uh, it can uh, take some space to uh, to discuss. So, but uh, um, you know, just a simple idea of uh, extending quasi-symmetric function that should be enough to keep us going. Um, but let's first take a quick um, review of uh, symmetric functions before we move on to quasi-symmetric function. So uh, symmetric functions, okay, so they are um, formal power series in infinite many variables um, in which the coefficient, coefficient stay the same. Um, under any permutation of the variables. Okay, so uh, simply put, put any monomial um, have, has the same uh, coefficient when you switch the subscript of the variable um, from any order i1 through ik to one through k. Okay, so such um, power series Formal power series on the formal multiplication is a sub algebra of this power series. And furthermore, it's a half algebra. Yeah, but we don't go into the co product part. <clears throat> um, so, cross symmetric functions, as we know, it has several important bases. And um, more or less because of this important basis and the relationship among them, that's, that makes cross symmetric functions so important. So among the bases are the elementary symmetric functions and these power sum symmetric functions. And, and uh, um, one can also define symmetric function instead of every, as a power series uh, as some kind of polynomial when we can only consider finite many variables. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now for quasi-symmetric function. So it's a generalization of symmetric functions. Here, the uh, monomial the coefficient of the monomial won't change if um, we still rearrange the subscripts, but this time we don't just do any permutation. We can still do up some kind of permutation, but uh, we keep the orders uh, intact. Okay, so i1 through ik, if we keep the order of i1 through ik, um, yeah, then they are same as x1 through xk. Uh, so that is also an algebra and also a half algebra. And it also has several nice linear bases. And what, uh, um, most interest, what, what is most interesting to us is the um, monomial uh, basis, monomial quasi-symmetric functions. So what is a monomial quasi-symmetric function? Well, it's given by um, 
composition. Okay, so a composition here we just take it as a vector. It's really just a vector of positive integers. Okay, so uh, even though in um, commentorics or number theory, the uh, composition is more like it's a composition of another integer, right? So if an integer can be written as an ordered sum of um, several other integers, then those other integers is called a comp composition of this particular integer. But for, for, for now, for, for, for us, we don't, we, we don't really care what the sum Q. So it's just a vector of positive numbers. So for such a, a, a vector, we can define this uh, formal power series. Okay, so, uh, so here the exponents are fixed, given by the um, components of the uh, composition. And then we let the subscript to change, change arbitrarily okay, as long as they keep the order. Okay, so that is uh, um, so this is apparently a quasi-symmetric function as we defined above, and actually it is a linear basis. Um, so what is also interesting about this uh, linear basis is that not only they span the um, um, the algebra as a linear basis, um, they actually has all very nice uh, multiplication properties. So in other words, they are more or less close. They are close on the multiplication. Um, well, not, not exactly on the multiplication, but uh, you know, they have very nice formula when, they, when two of them are multiplied. So in other words, it satisfies this quasi-shuffle rule. So if we take uh, two compositions, and the corresponding uh, quasi-symmetric functions, monomial quasi-symmetric functions, when they multiply, they give a linear combination of well, other quasi-symmetric functions, not surprisingly, uh, but the coefficients are given uh, very nicely. Okay, so those, uh, they are, they, they result to express those, this product are given by this, um, so the partial shuffle of the compositions. Okay, so um, it's given by this recursive uh, formula. Okay, so to, to put in short, uh, that there is a very nice way to express those um, product. And another thing that is um, quite remarkable about this uh, monomial quasi-symmetric function, uh, which is also very relevant to this conference is that um, they are very much related to multiple theta values. Okay, so today we have seen some talks on Riemann theta functions. Um, if you expand to the multiple variables, um, so then you have multiple theta values. Okay, so in two variable case, actually that went back to Euler and uh, Goldbach. You know, Euler and Goldbach, they were the first one to discuss two variable. Uh, theta values, and they obtain remarkable formulas, um, which influenced future, future um, research. Okay, so um, explicitly they are given by this uh, infinite sum. Okay, so um, um, now we can see that if there is only one variable, it's just a Riemann theta. Uh, but for multiple variables, we don't want to, to let the variable uh, or the, sorry, or the uh, indices to be arbitrary because in that case, you just have a product of several uh, theta values. So um, instead we consider this kind of condition. And then, then this, uh, from here you see that uh, it's really just a monomial quasi-symmetric quasi function. Um, when um, you evaluate the variable at the corresponding uh, reciprocal reciprocal of the index. Okay. So in particular, in particular, the multiplication of quasi-symmetric functions gives the product of multiple theta values. And uh, this connection leads to um, very uh, extensive and uh, uh, deep research of multiple theta values. So the um, quasi-shuffle product or Gestapo. Okay. So that's the um, uh, quasi-symmetric function, um, monomial quasi-symmetric function and the multiple theta values. 
Okay, so uh, uh, once again, monomial quasi merge function, quasi merge functions, they are defined for this uh, composition. Okay, so then um, a natural question ar ar arises. So um, if we can, if we consider more than uh, beyond composition, if we consider so called a weak composition, okay, a weak composition. In other words, if we look at a vector of non-negative integers, okay, um, then um, such an expression still looks formally, formally, we can, we can still write this uh, ex expression, right? So then what would be the uh, kind of quasi-symmetric function theory for that, okay? So this is also relevant to multiple theta values because for multi multiple theta values, as we know, um, like for one variable, Riemann theta from theta value, we don't have to just consider positive values. We can consider negative zero and negative values. Okay, so here is like, if, if we take a uh, non-negative value, then, then what happens? Um, so as I mentioned, Earlier, so the, what led us to consider this question actually is a problem posed by um, Ruta. Um, so, in his uh, work in the 1960s, he found that um, this uh, famous formula of uh, Warren, okay, anyway, it's called Warren's formula, um, it's a relation between elementary symmetric function and the power symmetric function. Um, so, that so it's quite a complicated formula, but it turned out to be a special case of the so-called species identity in Rotabex's algebra. Okay, so once again, uh, I won't go into much of into Rotabex's algebra, um, but uh, from here, um, Rotab posed the problem that, um, or made a suggestion that a natural and a general approach to generalizing symmetric function is through Rotabex's algebra. Okay, so, um, so, so um, you know, he made this uh, suggestion in the 1990, in the middle 1990s, and uh, it turned out many years later that what he suggests is actually made a lot of sense. Um, so, but let me just give the definition of Rotabex algebra before I move forward. So it's a um, it's linear operator defined by a, defined on a, a associative algebra that satisfy this uh, operator identity. Okay, so, so uh, one can change the, uh, one can put a scalar in front of the third term, but we only, we are, for us, it's really just one. So when I say that, uh, or when I actually prove that, all this uh, uh, quasi-symmetric multiplication or quasi-shuffle product come from, comes from this uh, identity, okay? Um, so from there, you can generate this so-called quasi-shuffle algebra, okay, which is uh, like a more abstract form of quasi-symmetric functions, where instead of using um, variables, you use symbols, okay. So then overall, uh, we have the following uh, picture, okay, so um, that I thought may help for us to see what's going on before we go into uh, too much details, okay. So for uh, integer sequences, we have compositions, okay? And then so-called left weak compositions, um, which consists of uh, vectors where the last component is positive, okay? Then weak composition, okay? That's the, only the no, uh, vectors of non-negative integers. So they each correspond to a class of quasi-symmetric functions, okay? So uh, left weak and weak. All right, and then um, from what I mentioned above, um, so uh, in Rota's view, okay, well, I, of course, in his time, there is no quasi-symmetric function as well. Um, so they correspond to uh, unitary and non-unitary Rota X algebra, okay, and then some uh, quasi-symmetric functions. Okay, uh, I mean, sorry, quasi-shuffle algebras. Okay, so, um, so we'll see later that for left weak composition, one can still define a cross symmetric function, but for weak composition, um, there will be some divergence. Okay, so then uh, well, you will need a uh, renormalization to, to do that, which I'll briefly touch upon. Okay, so um, 
a uh, left weak uh, composition is a, a vector of non-negative integers where the last uh, component must be positive. Okay, you can have all zeros you want, but the last one must be positive. And then uh, we let the uh, LWC and the WC to denote the set of left weak compositions and weak compositions. And now for our left weak composition, um, one can actually define this formally, this formal power series, which is actually um, makes sense. Okay, which is def well defined formal power series. Okay, we don't require convergence um, as with uh, other power series. And then, um, um, so then uh, it has a quite a nice property. And uh, um, so actually we can show that it's, it corresponds to this free community non-unitary root of x as you go. Okay, so this is more or less kind of consistent with, uh, well, this actually quite precisely consistent is consistent with Rota's proposal. And then uh, we can also take the evaluation and then we get a new class of multiple theta values. Okay, so our, our generalization of multiple theta values called left weak multiple theta values, okay, which uh, can be interesting on its own. Um, but then we all have problem when we have uh, considered really this weak uh, cross symmetric function. Okay, so why? Um, so, so in other words, here we don't we allow the last component to be zero. Okay, so in this case we'll have serious problem. Um, let's just look at the easiest case, right? So if the composition is just uh, one component zero, and then what we have is taking all these zero powers of the variables. And then that means that we, we take this infinite sum of ones, right? Of course, this is not well defined. So in this case, not only this, this uh, is not a formal power series, okay? It's not even well defined as a formal power series because you have, you'll have infinite coefficients, okay? So uh, kind of a naive way to fix this is that um, instead of uh, taking the component to be zero, as here, as we see, is that's really the, the source of the problem. Um, we kind of disturb this uh, uh, exponent by um, small um, variable, okay, which we call epsilon, all right. And so this, so instead of uh, considering all the um, natural numbers, we consider natural number plus this little epsilon. Um, so it's kind of artificially introduced uh, number has this property. And the, in that case, um, um, uh, uh, variable raised to epsilon is not one anymore. So in that case, for example, in this example, you would have uh, xn to the epsilon's power, okay, which is, is not an infinite many of one. Okay, so this, of course, this is very formal. It has to be done in a rigorous way in the at break setting. And it was uh, accomplished in this paper of um, um, Ho Yi and, uh, and uh, uh, Rang Yu Wei in uh, uh, 2019. Okay, well, it's published last year. Um, but then um, to really make sense of this, in other words, to really realize those kind of expression as uh, power series, um, we need to use uh, renormalization, okay? Which is a method coming from physics and uh, which is, has a pretty big uh, framework. So abstract framework. So let me just use the last few minutes to uh, go through the general setup, okay? so. Um, renormalization, simply put, um, is a way to deal with divergence uh, coming from um, physics, you know, most notably from quantum field theory. So um, we, you know, we should have heard of like Feynman diagram, Feynman integral. Uh, those are, Feynman integrals are mostly divergent in, in, in order to extract the final value, physicists use this renormalization. Um, for, for a long time, it's a pretty uh, kind of uh, physical and outside of realm of mathematics. Um, until Colin Kramer actually, they give a algebraic formulation of this process of extracting finite values from um, divergent data. So there are key uh, um, 
result is this uh, method is the algebraic book for half factorization, which says that if you have a half algebra, and if you have a rotabex algebra, okay, so by coincidence here, we again have a rotabex algebra. And if you have algebra homomorphism from a half algebra to a rotabex algebra, then you can have a convolution product um, factorization of this homomorphism into two components. Okay, one is to the uh, image of the rotabex operator, one is to the you know, complement of the image of the rotabex operator. Um, in, the, in physics terminology, um, this R is the Laurent series, and uh, uh, PR is the uh, Laurent series with negative powers, and uh, this is the Laurent series with non-negative powers or power series. Okay, so, so then the idea is that um, if you have a divergent integral, for example, you can expand it and get a Laurent series, and then uh, this kind of uh, take away the negative power of the Laurent series, and uh, you are left with a power series. Okay, once you have a power series, then you can try to get some value from there. Okay, for example, by evaluating at a zero. Um, then to apply that method to our setup, um, we take any weak composition. Uh, so we, we need to ha have a half algebra, okay? And then we need to get a root of x algebra and this map from um, weak uh, quasi-symmetric uh, functions, okay? So, uh, so, we, 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 so we, we start with a weak composition and then we define this uh, double back um, composition called back compositions. And then we use that to build a uh, half algebra. Okay, the product is the kind of, is the quasi shuffle product that we have encountered before. And then uh, for the root of x algebra, okay, we take this left weak quasi symmetric function, okay, which we know is, um, um, is algebra. Then we add a uh, extra variable t here, and then we get a Laurent series from this um, algebra. So we have a new algebra, and then it has a well-defined root of x operator. And then um, um, we, for, then we define this algebra homomorphism. Okay, so for this double um, by complex uh, by composition, we obtain this. Uh, this part that looks like um, for, um, what uh, uh, quasi symmetric function, right? But uh, it uh, actually um, diverges as we saw in the example earlier. So what we did is that we add this so-called regular regulator, okay, or disturb. Okay, or, or, or perturbation or deformation, okay, whatever you want to call it, just so that it uh, doesn't converge, uh, doesn't diverge anymore, okay. Instead, it's a Laurent series, okay. So then we have this algebra homomorphism. And from there, we use uh, uh, concurrent uh, block of factorization. Uh, we look at this plus part, okay, which gives us uh, algebra homomorphism from this half algebra to this uh, power series, okay? And then once we take this variable z to be zero, we have uh, algebra homomorphism to this uh, one variable polynomial on this left weak symmetric functions, okay? Uh, but this still depend on this uh, auxiliary variable beta. And after our averaging process, we can get rid of this beta and we can get really this uh, from, from weak composition to a uh, power series. Okay, so then we define that to be the uh, weak symmetric, quasi symmetric function. Okay, from for, this is defined for any weak composition. All right, so uh, for example, the uh, the easiest example that is divergent we had earlier for the zero composition, the corresponding uh, um, quasi symmetric function is minus t minus a half. Okay. All right. So that's yeah, so I, I just used up use up my time. So so let me just quickly say uh, finish this by saying that um, so in summary we get so called a one point renormalization of weak composition or uh, com uh, quasi symmetric function, and it's uh, related to uh, Ihara Kaneko Zagier's uh, work on 
they are renormalization of quasi-symmetric function. Okay, so let me just uh, bring up the uh, references and uh, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you.